In previous episodes of this series, I showed you how to deliver dynamic front-end templates using the Hotwire Turbo system. We also ran into a case where, in making an infinite scroll feature, we needed to update an ID number on the page so that the web browser can tell the backend what information to grab for the next request. To solve that dilemma, we created a Stimulus.js controller that dynamically updates the cursor position by setting a hidden HTML attribute on the page whenever a request is made. After making that episode, I thought up a possible way to better simplify this design. Rather than using Stimulus to update the dynamic data on the page, we can use Turbo to do much the same thing using Turbo templates. By placing your Turbo return data in a template, you can modify more than one page element at a time. I'm now going to show you how to do that in an application. I thought of this idea after reading the Stimulus documentation article, Designing for Resilience. It got me in the mindset of thinking how I can make my Stimulus controller as minimal dependency as possible. Will this idea work like I think it will? Or will shifting more workload to be performed by Turbo in the backend only make the code unnecessarily more complicated? Let's give this idea a try and find out. The Turbo Streams helpers that we use in our controller are also available in the Turbo Stream templates. To create a Turbo Stream template, all you have to do is create a template file like you would as if you were rendering HTML, but prepend the extension with Turbo Stream. So I'm going to test this out by refactoring my controller, removing the in controller rendering instruction, and moving it into a template file named index.turbostream.slim. Now I'm going to paste the code here that looks almost exactly the same as what I have in my controller. The only difference now is that it's building this turbo stream append instruction in the view template. And this is where we get that flexibility to do more than one operation, because when we're using a template, we can just add on more instructions for different turbo frames on the page. So now that we've got that code in place, let's try out an infinite scroll on the web page and see what happens. So on the first attempt here, we can see that our page is loading the turbo web requests, but for some reason, the page part is not appending the new items to the load more area at the bottom of the page as expected. Let's try to debug this by taking a look at the information being returned in the web request. So as you can see, it's rendering a full web page complete with the enclosing HTML tags and all of the header and footer formatting, not just a simple turbo stream instruction as we would expect. And this is because when you're rendering a turbo stream from within a template, you need to explicitly specify in your controller render layout false. So let's go ahead and correct that. Now when we go back into the page, it's loading and appending the new items as expected. If we take a look at the response coming from the server, we can see that the return data just includes the turbo stream instructions. Next, I'm going to wrap that load more button in a turbo frame because now instead of using stimulus to dynamically update the cursor position so that it knows which stock note to load next, I'm going to have the back end update that static button with updated information. So every load more request now is going to replace the button using a turbo stream. And remember, we're replacing the button because the form containing the button has that cursor ID number that we're trying to update. So with that set up, I'm going to go to our turbo stream template and add that secondary instruction for the front end to process. This line is going to update the cursor position on the load more button with a new partial. Stimulus is still going to be needed, but we can get rid of its event handler for the click event where it's dynamically updating the cursor. All Stimulus is going to do now is trigger the load more button to be automatically clicked when you scroll to the bottom of the page, giving you the effect of infinite scroll. So in doing some of the reorganizing of this code, one thing I did was put some of my partials in a directory called application. This makes use of a feature in Rails called template inheritance. If you have partials that are shared among multiple controllers, the application directory is always on the search path, so you can reference those files in your render statements without having to prepend a folder name to them. 
you can reference them as if they're in that folder for the controller. This is just a neat little shortcut that I have a link to about in the video description. So now that we have all that set up, let's give it a try in the web browser. So as you can see, when I try activating the infinite scroll feature, there seems to be some sort of a race condition going on here. A lot of requests are getting triggered and then quickly canceled to be replaced by the same request. The scroll feature ultimately seems to be working all right, but this error kind of annoys me. Let's try to fix it. One of the ways I would like to debug this is to disable the automatic scroll trigger and see what happens when we try to hit the load more button manually. Now one of the first things I notice is that when you click on that load more button, the turbo frame for the load more form gets replaced with just a plain form without a turbo frame. Have another look. The turbo frame disappears and you've got just a form without a turbo frame wrapper. This is happening because I made a mistake earlier when I wrapped the load more button in a turbo frame, which turns out to be an unnecessary step. I was mistaken because the append operation works within a turbo frame, but when you're doing a replace, it'll replace the entire HTML target that you specify, which would include replacing the turbo frame itself if the DOM object that you specify is a turbo frame. So let's extract that form content from the turbo frame and we'll just replace the form directly. So I've made an adjustment to the code and as you can see, when we click the load more button now, it seems to be working all right. Now let's re-enable the automatic scroll trigger in the stimulus controller. When we go back to the page and try to use the infinite scroll, we're not getting those same canceled requests. So I'm thinking that the turbo frame getting completely replaced in the load operation had something to do with those troublesome HTTP requests. But now we have a new problem. Some of these items are getting pulled multiple times. So here we have an ID number, 31966. And if you scroll up a bit, you can see another 31966. This should not be happening. All of the items are supposed to be in order and appearing only once. So what's going on? Well, it seems that the load more button on the same form is getting triggered multiple times by the scrolling events. We need to prevent that so that if the load more function is triggered, the infinite scroll shouldn't be able to trigger another web request for the same data. It needs to wait until the last request is complete. And one way we could accomplish this is by disabling the form button by adding the disabled HTML attribute using a one-liner of JavaScript code in the stimulus controller. All right, so now that we've added that, it seems that we fixed that asynchronous type of web request problem. The infinite scroll is running perfectly now and pulling each item only once. I hope that gives you some insight into how to use Turbo and Stimulus.js a little more effectively. I'm really enthusiastic about this framework overall because I think it has the potential to make a single programmer a lot more productive on small to medium sized projects. I'm glad to see that recently DHH reaffirmed Basecamp's commitment to continue developing this technology. And if you want to know more about what's going on in the community developing Hotwire, I recommend checking out my last video where I covered the potential long-term impact of some of the project's major contributors departing. So far, I'm not too worried since Rails has a terrific following and this new way of doing front-end is still in its early days. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button as I'm going to be adding a lot more to my Stonk Notes program and I'll be using the latest Rails Hotwire technology to help make it happen. So I'll see you in those upcoming videos.